man, glad to have you guys with us tonight. We are uh, concluding what has been a phenomenal day. Uh, we have a very special guest with us today, Miss Christine Kane. But before Christine comes up, before she comes up, I want to introduce the man behind the mission of A21. Come on, Nick Kane, stand up. Nick is a great friend. Great friend of Celebration Church, and uh, we are so glad that Nick and Chris are with us. Many of you know Chris. She's a great friend of Celebration. She is a phenomenal speaker and uh, out of Hillsong Church, Australia. And, of course, she leads the A21 campaign that all of you guys, if you give to Celebration Church, you give to A21. Many of you are partners with A21 personally. It's an incredible ministry that rescues girls out of human trafficking around the world. And we're so privileged. Yeah. We're so privileged to be a part of it, and we have the A21 run and some other fun things coming up this year, but uh, we want you to hear from Chris tonight as we continue our Taking Ground ser- series, so I want you to give the best Celebration Church welcome you can right now for Miss Christine K. Thank you, Spast. I love it. How y'all doing? You can be seated. I love this. This is the six o'clocks. You are on fire, and... Um, you, you were sort of up at 7 a.m. and you prayed for the 9.30 and the 10.30 and the 11.30. How many were not even out of bed before any of those? Ta- yes, okay. Anyway, it's all my favorite service because God always leaves the best to last. And so with that celebration, we start off fantastic, but it just gets better and better and better and better as the day goes on. So, you know, the one thing Pastor Stovall didn't say about my husband, um, he did say the man behind the mission, but he forgot to say that he is the single most ravishing piece of masculine flesh on planet Earth. So, <laughs> Pastor, you left that part out. And um, I don't know how you could have missed that. But anyway, so if you were having a shower this morning and you discovered you're a woman, could you just put your hand up? Some of you apparently are not sure, so we do have prayer counselors for you. But put your hand up again if you're a woman. Okay, you are who I'm talking to right now. Tomorrow night, everyone say tomorrow night. You do not want to miss tomorrow night. You know, we only have a couple of big sisterhood united nights a year. And um, a lot of extra effort goes in. You know, we never ask you to come out um, an extra night if there's not a reason for it. I've got a word on my heart and I know that it's going to be awesome. And, you know, we've got a lot of special treats. So please bring your friends. If I can come across the world, and I literally did fly in from Germany last night, then you can fl- drive across the city and be here tomorrow. And um, we are going to have an awesome time. So, um, men, if you wear a really pretty coloured dress, we'll let you. Anyway, so I... <laughs> I love this. This is like this is my Jacksonville family. You know, the first five years you come, you're a visitor. But by this time, I'm just part of the fan- furniture. So is it kind of okay if I'm just, this is my Jacksonville home church. Is this fine if I call you my Jacksonville, my, my family? I love it. We're going to start with a, 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 a YouTube little video because how else would you start church on a Sunday night? So why don't you just check it out? Hi everyone! Do you want to play a game? Come on, come play with me! Don't you want to play a game? Come on, play a game with me! Let's play a game! Let's play a game called Find Everything in Your Parents' House That's Expired. This game is so easy. Okay, so pause this video and go find everything in your parents' house that's expired. Welcome back! So, to begin, I went to my parents' fridge and... I think I won. October 30th, 2008. July 23rd, 2008. December 15th, 2007. December 8th, 2006. July 15th, 2006. December 13th, 2007. I don't think pixie sticks have an expiration date, but when was the last time a child was in this house? Expired. It's gotta be expired. Oh no, this isn't looking good. June 27th, 2004. Expired. July 26th, 2008. Expired. 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 December 21st, 2008. Not yet expired! Let's have some Italian! Oh, this isn't looking promising. Oh my goodness. October 1992. Expired. Did I win? Did I beat you? I had a lot of good stuff this round. No? You had more expired stuff than me? Well, okay, just just wait, okay? Just hold your, hold your horses, because I have the checkmate of this game. Do you see this packaging? I want you to guess how old this is. August 8th, 1966. Expired! If there's one thing I think I learned from this game, it's that my parents don't believe in expiration dates. So, if you ever come over to my house to eat sometime, don't have anything. 
Whose pantry looks a little bit like that if I came to your house? Yeah, my mother's does, that's for sure. She's definitely got stuff in there from the 60s. But why I showed that, and some of you are wondering, how on earth is she going to get a message out of that video? But this is the deal. When I was watching this, he said a phrase that just actually activated something on the inside of me. I just couldn't believe it. He said, if you come over to our place for dinner, don't, because my parents don't believe in expiration dates. And when he said that, it's just something went off on the inside of me and I thought not only do his parents not believe in expiration dates, but you and I serve a God who doesn't believe in expiration dates. In fact, God is the God that tends to work when things are past their use by date, when things are in their expiry date zone. I'm going to show you this. If you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 11, we'll just start with this scripture. The Bible says, By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age, everyone say past the age. I love it. I love it because I know I'm in America, so Americans go past the age. But to an Australian, that sounds a bit unusual because we say past the age. Everyone say past. Everyone say awesome like an Australian. You're so dignified. Now say it like an American. I love the six o'clock service. Past the age, back on point. And the Bible goes on to say, because she judged him faithful. Who had promise? I love this. The Bible says that Sarah was giving, given strength to conceive seed when she was past the age, when it was biologically impossible, when it couldn't happen, when it should have already happened. If it was ever going to happen, it should have happened. But the Bible says when she was past the age, when she was 90 years old, she was given strength to conceive seed. And the reason she was able to do that is because after 25 years, she got to a place in her life where she finally judged him who promised to be faithful. Tonight, church, we're here. And I'm not here to speak to people that are in the waiting room of God's promise. They're kind of like going, okay, God, hurry up. I know it can still happen. I'm here to talk to people who have buried the promises of God. We're at the graveyard of dead promises. Those promises that you've put in the coffin, that you think they can't come to pass. You think it can't happen. You think if it was going to happen for you, it would have already happened. It should have happened. You're too old. You're not educated enough. You've blown it. You've made too many mistakes. I'm here tonight to tell you that if God said it, God will do it. If God promised it, it shall come to pass. But you've got to come to a place where you'll judge him who promised to be faithful. You know, I want you to see two scriptures. In Luke chapter 18, verse 27, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus said, but he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. The church, in case you haven't worked this out yet, the church is not a natural phenomena. It's not something you can look at and go, what is possible with God? It's, it can be scientifically proven. It can be tested in a test tube. It can be, um, you know, mathematically worked out. Everything about our faith is supernatural. And the world in which we live in, that is full of so much instability, so much uncertainty, God's reminding His church that what is impossible with man is possible with God. What is economically impossible with man is possible with God. What is politically impossible with man is possible with God. What is environmentally impossible with man is possible with God. That person that you think can't be saved, that disease that you think can't be healed, that financial situation that you think can't happen because of the economy, that dream that you once had that you've given up on because you think you're too old or you're not educated enough or you're not connected enough. I want you to know that what is impossible with man is possible with God. God dwells in impossibilities. That's where God operates. I want you to have a look at 2 Corinthians. The Bible says, for all the promises, everyone say all. For all the promises of God are in Him, yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Not some of the promises, but all of the promises. Now, I'm not talking tonight about wishful thinking. I'm not talking about selfish ambition. But I am talking about promises that God has declared and decreed in His Word. I am speaking about promises that have been spoken over your life and you've buried them. You just think it can't happen. It's going to happen to someone else. God's moved aside. He's moved over me. The Bible says all the promises of God are in Him, yes, and in Him, amen. It all comes back to Jesus. God's bringing His whole church back to Him. I love this 
Because it's not about our gift, it's not about our talent, it's not about our resources, it's not about our connection, it's not about our marketing, it's about Jesus. All the promises of God are in Him, yes. And in Him, amen. Do you remember when you were first saved, how you believed God for anything? In fact, you didn't know yet that God doesn't do certain things. So you just believed if you read it in the Bible, it was true. It was going to happen. I was one of those people. I was saved and I saw miracles all the time because I really believed for them. Now, you know, you get on in your Christian life a little bit and you start to get a little bit disillusioned or disappointed or cynical or you start to think God's a bit busy and he's got better things to do than worry about you. But you know, God is incredibly interested in the detail of our life, of our normal everyday life. Now, do you remember when you were first saved? You'd get checks in the mail. Every conversation you had, it was God, and God just gave you favor with your boss. And when you drove to Walmart, you got the parking spot right in front of the front door, and it was just fantastic. I always had the parking spot anointing. I'm trying to give that to my kids. I get them to pray for it every time we go into a parking lot. I do. But recently, I don't need parking spot anointings anymore now as much as I need airplane anointings because I'm in the sky a lot. And so I was in... Um, Knoxville, Tennessee, flying from Knoxville back home to Orange County. And it was the last flight that was connecting me to Chicago to get a connecting flight back to Orange County. And this was not a big global issue. This was not going to rescue the victims of human trafficking. This was not going to stop world hunger. I just wanted to get home this Sunday night because I, was, I wanted to take my kids to school on Monday morning. A simple thing, but really important to me. And so I get to Knoxville Airport and the plane had been delayed two hours because of bad weather. And Nick was like, you know, honey, that's fine because you've got a three-hour layover in Chicago. So there's no stress. So we get into the plane. I was feeling fantastic. It didn't matter because I had a great connection time in Chicago. And um, when we got into Chicago airspace, the captain gets over the loudspeaker and he says, ladies and gentlemen, We've been put in a holding pattern because of bad weather in Chicago and they've closed one of the runways. And so we're going to be in a holding pattern for 45 minutes. Well, now I was starting to sweat because I knew if we landed in 45 minutes, by the time we even got to the gate, you know, my, my plane wouldn't be there. And, and to tell me that we're in a holding pattern doesn't work with my personality type anyway. Those two words just don't really work for me. And so anyway, my phone was accidentally on. And um, because it was accidentally on at 35,000 feet, I was accidentally texting my husband. And so he was telling me which gate um, I was going to arrive in and he was checking it all online and then which gate I would leave from and it was in a different terminal. So he said, it's, it's, a high, it's highly improbable that you're going to make this. But if you get off and you run, your plane's been delayed for 10 minutes, just maybe because of the weather, something will happen. So I'm telling you, the plane landed. Now, I just prayed that nobody would recognize me because when that thing landed, we stood up, forget old people and everything because I just bowled everyone over like Skittles through the aisle and then honestly I could hear the chariots of fire music as I'm running through Chicago airport bowling everyone over anyway I turn around the corner and I get there and I see my aeroplane through the window 